just about everything we do in the Boeing Innovation Center, most people believe it's impossible or impractical. There's always reasons of why not, and a lot of those times those are based on widely held beliefs and paradigms, and our job is to shatter those and focus on the physics and make things practical. Avant d'être autorisé à sillonner le ciel, un avion doit remplir de nombreuses conditions pour obtenir l'aval des différents organismes de certification. Une série de tests est donc réalisée en laboratoire, au sol comme en vol. Un processus qui prend environ un an et demi à l'avionneur. C'est à l'intérieur du 787-9, configuré pour les tests qu'Aérocontact TV a rencontré Spencer Delanda, ingénieur et c'est en vol. Il nous raconte le quotidien de son travail. I work in uh, flight test operations as an engineer, flight test engineer. My job primarily is to make sure that the airplane is configured properly for test, right? So we treat every test like it's a test being performed in a laboratory, right? Where we really need to make sure that The configuration of the airplane is documented and recorded so we could repeat the test if we had to repeat the test. So, um, yeah, so that's basically what my job is. What, what we do is we follow this airplane, the first um, three airplanes of build, and we make sure that the airplane is, is built with test equipment installed, and we make sure that the right, the proper test equipment is installed on the airplane for test. So we, we start early on in the factories, <clears throat> all over the world. We go to Japan, um, make sure that our wings are built properly with the right test equipment. Right? We go to Italy, for example. We go to Wichita, Kansas. We go, we go to different places to make sure that we have our test equipment installed on these first three airplanes. And we work very closely with the suppliers to make sure that they get our requirements for test. Um, the tests that are laid out by our FAA, the you know, Federal um, Aviation Association. Le 787, équipé des moteurs Rolls-Royce et aux couleurs de Nippon Airways, est entré en service le 6 août. La compagnie japonaise est ainsi devenue le premier opérateur du nouveau modèle. Spencer rappelle les dates clés du second membre de la famille 787. We fly like this airplane, for example. Its first flight was September 17th of last year and uh, we finished certification testing about a month ago. So this airplane is the number one airplane, a lot of stability and control testing with the Rolls-Royce engines. We have another airplane that's very similar to this, but with the GE engines. And so we do the same type of testing and we make sure that, that, that the GE engines will perform similar to the Rolls-Royce engines. Anna a reçu son premier 787-9 le 29 juillet. 14 autres devraient rejoindre sa flotte à compter de 2016. Air New Zealand a quant à elle pris possession de son premier Dreamliner le 8 juillet et passé commande pour 9 autres 787-9. Une livraison prévue jusqu'en 2017. Le premier vol commercial pour la compagnie néo-zélandaise fixé au 15 octobre prochain. A noter que c'est ce premier modèle qu'Air France a également commandé avec une première livraison prévue pour janvier 2017.